thank the Lord for another opportunity to worship Him. Thankful for the Lord's protection and providence and kindness toward us. Now, power is still out, but a lot of people had a lot worse, so we thank the Lord for that. If you have your Bible, turn with me to John, First John, chapter number one. First John, chapter number one. <clears throat> Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Again, as has been mentioned, pray for Brother Larry as he travels and he preaches. 1 John, chapter number 1, verse number 5 through the end of the chapter. The scripture says this, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. We say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We say that we have not sinned. We make him a liar. His word is not in us. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd be with us as we go through the Sunday school time this morning. Pray that your will would be done, that you would be magnified, glorified in this time and praised and worshiped. Pray that you would teach us the truth of this text here that we're considering this morning. Father, I pray that you would be gracious to the lost in here in this county, this community, and if there be any among us lost, I pray that it be your will to save them, God, and be gracious to them. We thank you for the grace that you showed us, God. Um, we had nothing to bring to you, and Lord, you've been gracious to us, so we thank you for that, God. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to look at forgiveness here. First, in our first verse, the Bible says this. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declaring to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. First of all, there's this, there's this, uh, in the first text, we have a very powerful truth here that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. No darkness at all. This is a message which we've heard and declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So it sets forth for us who God is. There is no darkness in God, no nastiness, no depravity, nothing vile about God. God is light. God is pure. God is holy. God is above us. God is righteous and and God is completely light and in him is no darkness at all. So then we have this idea that if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. We lie and do not the truth. So first there's this command given that if we say we're his, we ought to walk as he walks and tells us to walk and be like him and to be different than the world, different than we used to be. So we're conceived in sin. We're conceived in iniquity. Um, we're born morally bankrupt, and we call that depravity, that we are fallen by nature, and we're born into this corruption. But God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. And so when He saves a man or a woman, He changes that man or woman. And so the whole trajectory of our life now has changed, where we were all about ourselves, we're all about living for unrighteousness and ungodliness. Now the whole aim of our life should be aimed at pleasing God. And, and they were called Christians because they were Christ-like and they acted like Christ. And so if we're going to be like God, we need to walk in light. So there's a command here that we are to be like God, like Him, like He is. We're, we're not just to say we're Christians and give lip service to God and say, yeah, I believe in God and then live like the devil. So 
Uh, you can even read in Acts, I believe it's two times that he's mentioned, Jesus Christ is mentioned in, as Savior in the book of Acts, but Lord is used over 90 times. So there's this idea in the scriptures that if Jesus is Savior, he's Lord. So we should live like him. We should be like him. But after we see the command here to live like him, there's the con. Listen to this. If we say or if we, have, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. And then it goes on. If we said that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And so the man or the woman that would be deceived and say, yes, I follow Christ and there's no light in you. Not that you're perfect, not that you don't sin at all. But if there's no light in you, you walk in darkness. Your life is characterized by spiritual darkness, spiritual death. There, there's, no, there's no sense of the inner sin in you, the wickedness of your own heart and the, the depravity of your own nature and, and your desperate need for God. If there's no spiritual light in your life and, and you're characterized by walking in darkness, you're nothing more than a con. You are not a Christian. You are a con. You have deceived yourself. You may say, I am fine, all is well. And I would venture to say that here in the Bible Belt, that if you were to ask anybody, who say you go to a restaurant and you ask a person, you believe in God, I believe they would say most times, yes. Yes, I am a Christian. Yes, I believe in God. Okay? And then you look at their life, and it's two different things. Their life says, I hate God. Their actions say, I hate the Lord. But their mouth says, well, I'm a Christian, so... If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. We lie and do not the truth. So you're a con artist. You're, you're, you're living in this self-deceived place that you say, yes, I have fellowship with him, but you walk in darkness. You have spiritual darkness. You, you, you don't know your need for God. You don't have an inner realization of, by the Holy Spirit of your, your nastiness, your, your sinfulness. Uh, there was a preacher, William Carey, that on his tombstone he wanted written, A wretched, poor, and helpless worm, on thy kind arms I fall. A wretched, poor, and helpless worm, on thy kind arms mm -hmm. I fall. And really today, if there's anyone here that's saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is our plea. And to walk in light is to be obedient to him to follow after him, to know of our own need for him and to follow after him and to live as he lives. How do you do that? You read the scriptures and you can see the character of God and you follow after what he tells us to do. So it says, this is the message which we've heard of him, declaring to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. We say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. We lie and do not the truth. But listen here. We've got the command to live right and, and to follow after God and we see who God is. We have the, the deception and the con here, but we also have the cleansing. Listen to this. But if we walk in light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the truth and his word is not in us. Listen to this. I, I want to read some uh, what this man had said. If we walk in the light, these are persons that are enlightened by the spirit of God. So as to have a true sight and sense of sin, to know Christ and the way of salvation by him and our children of the light and are going on and increasing in spiritual light and knowledge. Walk on in Christ, the light, by faith and in the light and truth of the gospel and as becomes it and as children of the light and such are called out of darkness into marvelous light. And so walking in light is to be progressively growing the rest of your life and the spiritual truths, the spiritual knowledge, uh, the, the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of the gospel, the knowledge of true holiness, the, the knowledge of the way that we ought to live and to walk in this life. And if we walk in the light, 
as He is in the light, who? As God is in the light, then we have fellowship with Him. Fellowship, communion, Amen. fellowship with the, the very God that is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. And we have fellowship with Him, one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. And, and truly, we know that if we really look at ourselves, we know that we're polluted by nature and that our, our very nature is rottenness and defiled and wickedness. And, and there's nothing that we could offer up to God to say, look, I've not sinned as much as this one or that one. You ought to be kind to me. No, we're wicked rebels and we've sinned against God and we sinned because we wanted to. But he's had mercy on us. And the blood of his son, which is truly the only Forgiveness of sin cleanses us from all sin. There's no other hope for a man. And now, because God is just, He punishes sin, but in His Son, we've been, we died. We died in Christ. Right. When Christ died, we died with Him. We died in Him. And when He was raised, we raised with Him. And we walk in newness of life. And his very son cleanses us from all sin. Again, then he goes on. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But listen, if we confess our sins, mm -hmm. he is faithful and just to cleanse us and forgive us of all unrighteousness. Listen, though we are saved by the grace of God, though we are made new in him, though all of our sins are forgiven in Christ, we're not completely without the presence of sin. We, we do sin. We, we sin when we do things that we would rather do than what God has commanded. When we've decided, you know, we know what God says, but we want to do things our way, that's sin. When we lie, when we uh, disobey our parents, when we don't forgive others, yeah. when we backbite people, when we serve other gods well you said don't serve other gods well anything that takes the place of god you've made a god in your life when we use the name of god in vain when we um murder well you say i've never murdered someone well if you listen to the way that you hate people god said if you hated people that you were a murderer in your heart all these things that we do we're not without the presence of sins and we ought to not think that we're above needing forgiveness and so if we confess our sins, not to one another, though that's good, but straight to Christ and to God. We look at David. When David sinned with Bathsheba, who did he ask forgiveness from? He said, God, against you and you alone have I sinned. Right. And truly, our, our confession of sin is to be made to God against whom it is committed. And who really is the only one that can give us pardon for our sin. The only one that can really forgive our exceeding and wicked sinfulness. So if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Think now for a moment. If I read this article the other day. Um, if we, you know, if I borrowed $5 from you and told you, brother, I'm sorry, I can't pay it back. I just can't stand it. We would think that that was no small matter and you'd say, okay, probably it's easy to forgive, right? And you'd move on from it. If I borrowed $100 from him, it might be a little harder for him to say it's okay. If I borrowed $1,000, if I borrowed $10,000, $100,000, we're getting into big money. There's no small sins. And so every time we sin against God, it's not like we're borrowing a penny from him and asking him to forgive us. When we break the law of God, we've already broken a debt that we cannot return and pay back. And so these sins that we might try to write off as little things, we've now broken the law of God and we stand in need of forgiveness and we've, we've amounted up a debt that we'd never be able to pay back and we stand before God as having this big, heavy debt on us that none of us in our right would be able to go to God and say, you owe me forgiveness. You, you ought to forgive me. And yet in this promise of the scriptures, if we confess our sins, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us. Not because he saw that I would have any way of paying back any debt that I owed him. Not because he looked down through the corridors of time and saw me and said, Jackson, you'll just do some grand thing for me. Not because he saw that um, teaching or preaching or uh, raising a family or anything. or working, He didn't see that stuff and say, well, he's, he's a good old boy. He's really going to try his best. Not because he looked down and he saw and want him. God's not bound to our wills. He doesn't look at his creature and say, does this one want me? Does that one want me? Okay, I'll be nice to this one and not to that one. No. He looked down through time and he decided to be gracious to people. Why? To the purpose of his own will, the counsel of his own will. Not because we had merited it, but because God chose to be gracious. And so now we go to God not saying, well, you ought to forgive me. I didn't sin as bad as the next man. You say, Lord, please forgive me. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Um, uh, for the sake of Christ, please be merciful to me, a sinner. And not because we've deserved it, not because we've merited it, but because he has promised to save his people. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Amen. Amen. All on the merit of grace mm -hmm. on what Christ did on Calvary. And so now we can go to God without being arrogant, without being proud, but humbly falling before him, asking for mercy. And because he is gracious to us and loving to us, he says, if you'll forgive, confess your sins, he'll forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, Christian is not a Christian because they repented and believed one time. If you're a Christian and you're saved, you, you're repenting still and you're still believing and you're still asking God for forgiveness. And it's a lifestyle and it's a walk that you have that you're always asking for forgiveness and you're always repenting and believing towards God. Remember this morning here at the end of the text here, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Be careful that pride not find you. You are sinners in need of saving. and well, Without the Lord, none of us would have any hope in that we've sinned, we've broken his law, we've not merited anything good, we've done nothing good in ourselves. If you look, all vain religion is focused and founded upon what can I do to please God? What can I work out to please the holy God of heaven? But the true gospel is this, that we've done everything in spite of God and uh, everything against God. And he's forgiven us for his own name's sake and for his own glory. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. The word is not in us. Be very careful to be very humble uh, if you say you've never sinned and time passed as well as now, you deny your, your very nature, you de deny the, the, the fact that you are shaped in iniquity, that you were, you, listen, if you look over your whole life, if we displayed your very thoughts to the people here this morning, you would move counties. Your very thoughts are, are derived from wickedness. We're born in sin. To deny this is to not deny that we even need saving or forgiveness or to uh, listen. What if we didn't sin, we wouldn't need the Savior. And so to deny this is to deny God and to deny his glory and his grace and to spit upon his dear son. We make him a liar. That is that. God and his word declares that we're who we are from the womb. We're denying that. We're denying the plain truths of the scripture. We're denying original sin. We're denying that when Adam sinned, we sinned in him. We fell in him. We <coughs> fell away from God. We, we, we died spiritually. To deny this is to deny the wrath of God toward sin. <laughs> And if we deny these things, the word is not in us. His word is not in us. If his word is not in us, you stand in need of saving. 
So we saw first there's the command, the, the praise toward God. There's the con, which is him who says there's no sin, there's no darkness in him, that he walks in light, but really in truth he walks in darkness. And then we see the cleansing, that if we'll walk in the light as he is in the light, then the, we have fellowship with him. And the blood of Jesus sh that was shed on Calvary's cross was shed for us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us <coughs> our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I can go to God in faith asking for forgiveness because I know He's promised, not because I deserve it, but because He wanted to be gracious. And now when I ask the Lord, Father, forgive me, I know He will. And I don't have to worry about it. I, I don't have to try to earn something. I know it's all by the grace of God. We say we have not sinned, we make him a liar of the truth. His word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also the sins of the whole world, Jew or Gentile, all those that would come to him by faith, by the grace of God. We think back to Peter asking, uh, how many times ought to I forgive my brother? Seven? He said, no, 70 times seven. What's that mean? That's a, that's a definite number for an indefinite amount of times. And what is it but when we go to God for the same thing over and over again? I'm thankful for the forgiveness of God. So in this text, we... We have a very, and really you should read all of 1 John. It talks about the Christian walk and it's very applicable. And it tells us, you can read this and know whether or not you're his and get assurance of salvation. But what a truth that if we we'll confess our sins, he will cleanse us. He'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you this morning that you are light. We praise you for that, God. Lord, in you is no darkness at all. You are light. You are life. And you are holy and right, and righteous and pure, and undefiled by sin. And Lord, we are wicked and we've fallen from you, God. We have turned from you. Father, I pray you'd have mercy on us, God. Lord, I thank you for saving me, a sinner. Thank you for giving your darling son to die in my place that my payment would be paid on his account. That I'd have newness of life in him and cleansing from all unrighteousness. God, we praise you for your grace. Lord, I pray that you would help us, Lord, that we would walk according as you've told us to and that we would be humble before you Seek after you and seek after true holiness. Father, help us that we would be reminded this morning of the forgiveness that we have in Christ Jesus and that we would magnify your name over it. Father, if there's any here that are not saved, that are lost in their sin, Lord, we ask graciously that you would be gracious to them and save them in Christ's name. Amen.